Hello friends, today we are making a lovely little yellow linen dress to celebrate August 1st, which is the International Day of Friendship. I got this fabric out of the clearance section in Joann's, being as it was from the clearance section, I got as much as was available, which turned out to be about one and two thirds yards. The pattern called for a little over two yards and I knew it was going to be a stretch to make it work. It, I've made things similar work before and that just was not the case for this. Uh, once again, I come at you with as much of this fabric that the clearance section had to offer, this time in a lovely yellow linen, uh, because it is still breaking the hundred degrees outside and it's it's not cozy, guys. It, it is not cozy. Uh, this time, however, the pattern pieces I do not believe will fit uh, because how this pattern wants it to be laid out uh, and the grain line and the this and the that, uh, it's, it's just not going to work out that way. So um, we're going to take creative liberties with the pattern here. I have my little handy dandy uh, quilting ruler and I'm probably going to extend the front of the bodice uh, over by an inch and adjust the lining so that it is a front button dress and just use as much of the leftover fabric uh, for the skirt as possible. It is not going to have nearly the same shape that the original pattern calls for. Probably not going to do a gathered skirt, probably try to cut some gores out of it, um, but it'll be vaguely inspired by the pattern, but it will not match the pattern whatsoever. Fun! Okay, so last night I got the bodice cut out. Um, salvaged as much length as I could from that. Uh, so that's just kind of right now a rectangle skirt, but I plan on cutting uh, gores out of it later to give it the slightly more triangular shape. I have what I believe is enough to actually add in some pockets, yay. And I am right now going to try to attach the two front bodice pieces together. It looks like I have marks on the pattern where I should gather it up to um, and I did create a little facing thing out of just this modified pattern. So we're gonna figure this out and we're gonna pin all this together. Uh, I feel like the pattern had really good markings on it, so I could definitely tell where the gathers for the under bust and the top bust and whatnot were. So it was a pretty intuitive process just by using the pattern as it was marked out. Okay, so I have the bodice front gathered together, but since I'm already here, I thought I might as well pin together the facing and the darts for the back. So I'm just gonna sit here for five, 10 minutes and just zone out and go. Uh, this is my first mock-up though, so it is a bit of a risk that I'm using my preferred fabric for this, but uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay, I got everything uh, sewn up and I pinned the bodice together at the shoulder parts that involved another little gathery bit. Here, the side seam is pinned down. You might notice that we are going to sew over the front seam that goes the underbust front seam. We are going to learn from our mistakes last time. Even though we are not finishing off this seam yet with a pinking or this method that I am going to use where it is that fold over tuck thing. Uh, I have it folded over and tucked so it's going to be folded over and tucked into the seam already. Mistakes are learning opportunities. Not bad, I would say. I, I feel like it definitely has a, has a lot of room in the chest. Uh, in future makes of this garment, I would probably want another layer around the tum. Well, learning from past mistakes, I feel like I said that I wanted some interfacing on a pineapple dress around the tum and uh, just, just didn't do it with this one. We'll figure it out. We will see. 
we will make it work. A wiser man probably would have stay stitched around the collar, and uh, I, I was not a wiser man, but it turned out okay. Had a little break to get some chickpea salad. That's like a chicken salad, just with chickpeas instead of chicken. What did I do here? Oh, I sewed on the facing. I have not popped it right sideways yet. Instead, I went ahead and tacked on the sleeves, tacked up into until the gathering points gathered. Hopefully I can get just the sleeves on, flip everything inside out and give it a good iron again and have a usable bodice and then just get the pockets onto the skirt and then just compare bodice to skirt uh, to see how much we need to take in, adjust, etc. After I got done cutting out the bodice, whatever was a big enough rectangle, I said that that's gonna be my skirt and I'm just gonna cut gores out of it to try to emulate the more triangular shape in the pattern and how I decided to place the darts in the back. I took the back bodice piece and flipped that upside down and I marked out where that first marking for the dart was going to be, marked out the second dart dot and marked out where, how far down it went. Okay, so I had a triangle and I made it a slightly bigger triangle. Just increasing the size by one inch over, one inch down, half an inch over, like you, you get it. So that did allow the back darts to line up pretty much perfectly. There, that was rude. The dart, the dart as we made it was not shapely enough. So I would probably take that one inch and maybe bump it over by another inch. I have the skirt pinned to the bodice right now and um, so far not terrible. Like I like where I put the back darts in the skirt. Uh, going to need a little bit more of the um, back room pinched in. So we will get to that in a little bit, but I just, I got a little bit worn out at the machine and the pinning and everything like that. So I think that I'm going to take a machine break and head on over to the Netflix and hand sewing area to just relax and kind of disassociate while tacking down these seams on the inside, get everything a little bit more neatly organized, and so I do not have to poke myself while doing any more try-ons. We'll see you in an hour. So I think that when we last left our Brave Heroes, I was ironing down out the facing, so the facing part laid nice and flat. You get back in there. I have some tofu frying, all the seams are nice and finished. You might recall that my big square of skirt was um, pretty floppy. I did do two darts uh, in the back and a gore cut out at each of the sides, put a pocket in that and that reduced the room a little bit. Here is where I have the pocket on the skirt. And I pleated that down by just measuring. Here is the side seam. Here is kind of where I want it to end. Uh, so that is about nine and a half if I stretch and put that pleat in there. So that is about nine and a half. In the back part, I knew these darts were in approximately the same position. So here from that back dart on the bodice to the side where it connects is about three and three quarters. I just put a mark at about one and a quarter inches here and a mark for about two inches and squished the marks together uh, to create a little pleat. I wanted to have a pleat on the front because the original design has a pleat on the front and it just seemed like the easiest thing to do to create another little pleat in the back so created more pleats in the back and we will see 
right now if everything lines up. Can I say hello? Oh, good boy. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Besides, we did cut out a triangular gore, just kind of eyeballed it. Instead of that, I, I would have cut that gore out bigger to have a more extreme triangle and uh, had it a little bit longer too, just to enhance the triangular shape a little bit. For the pockets, we kind of just took whatever scrap fabric we had laying around. The angle for the skirt is about that and the angle for the pocket is about that so the pocket kind of like shifts a little bit to the side if there's nothing in it. All right it looked like everything got attached in an even length. I went ahead and trimmed down the extra bit of fabric on the bodice part so I'm gonna fold over the skirt part. I have the iron I have the iron heating up so that I can fold over that iron it down really really nice and good and potentially stitch across to make it extra nice and crispy. Uh, also my tofu is done and I wanted to show off how pretty my bowl looks. We are having another fridge clearing day so I am of course having a bibimbap and the kiddo had a bunch of extra eggs left over so I'm having one of those. Uh, that tofu that I was frying up and I really like these pickled carrots with the eggs for some reason and of course uh, garlic sesame green beads. But I also have the uh, double-sided interfacing that I'm going to put in like this part where the buttons are going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and iron that down while I'm ironing this part. I don't think that I'm going to be able to put any interfacing on the waist part. I think that I'm going to just try to rely on that extra stitch down of lining for that additional support. And then I'm going to try to button buttonholes. What do you think about buttons? Because I think that I like the amount of these small buttons, not so, so into this. These are, I have the same amount of the small buttons here and here. I like these small buttons better. I think my favorite color is this brown color. Yeah, color for sure. But I don't, I feel like if it stopped there, then it would, I don't know. I don't think that I would like that. These guys, there is one more than these brown buttons, but two less than these small buttons. Maybe my own bias. Mm. It just looks like somebody took three markers and just went meh. I wish I had enough of the warm brown. <laughs> yeah, so that warm brown is perfect with these colors. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. I think these are just two distinct clashing colors. No, but you think that this doesn't provide that amount of clash? I feel like tonally, but it also has the shell backing. I think you're going to go with a difference. Like these are the same coloring, and so they are going to have some of the same impact but they're more gradient, so it doesn't feel as abrupt. So I think that we'll go with the bigger buttons that are shelly, which means I need to string all these other matchy guys back up onto a string. Hello, hello, I have created the buttonholes. Then I have marked a chalk line one inch up from the hem so I can fold up my hem. I should also fold this triangle down in the corner, so has a cleaner edge. Well, once I get the hem finished on this though, I uh, can just see if the freight truck is dry and make sure those buttons are installed and I think we'll have a wearable garment today. If I didn't do so much hand stitching for the inside seams, then we would have had a wearable garment yesterday. All right, I got this all lined up, slashed through with a seam ripper and marked out with a water soluble pen. On those little lines, I marked in three quarters of an inch and on that little x mark right there is where my button's gonna go of course we hand stitched on those buttons while watching comey can't communicate these are uh some vintage buttons that i got out of those one of those big jars at an antique store you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about we hemmed up the skirt and here's the finished product I'm finally ready to film this and it's about to rain and it feels like I'm falling apart. Once again, this is linen and I ironed it the day before I went to work, threw it on and by the time that I got out of my hot car, it was already wrinkled. It's very comfortable dress temperature wise because of the linen, but the sleeves um, restrict your mobility. I have been told that vintage patterns are a little bit better about not restricting your arm mobility with the sleeves. I feel like if the there was a gore in the armpit, that would help with shoulder, like arm and shoulder mobility. 
because I had to get something off the high shelf and uh, had to get significant other involved because that just was not going to work. I enjoyed the bit bits of the pattern that I did use. Pattern, the materials cost on this was let's say $20 with the fabric and thread, $2 worth of buttons because it was one of those things of finding a big jar at an antique shop and autism brain thinks sorting buttons from big jars is fun. Manual labor, let's say that is uh, 11 to 12 hours at $20 an hour. So that would put us at 240 plus 20 plus this is a 265-ish dollar dress. So yes, uh, now my handmade and me made wardrobe is, um, I, I can totally just tell people that it's all bespoke and designer and completely ignore the fact that I'm the designer. Bear! Bear, would you like to say goodbye? Calm here. Okay, thank you. So I have a pug. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and leave any questions, comments, or concerns down below. New videos should be out on Fridays, except for this one, which today is the International Day of Friendship, so it is out August 1st, and there should be a playlist that this is added to, so feel free to look for that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Won't we, Bear? Bye. Bye. This is a linen fabric that came. No bone. As long as you're quiet, you can have the bone if you are quiet. Got braces on my legs too, in the hands. I got bear. Oh, you have the bone now. I'm gonna itch your little ears off and they are the floppiest part of you besides your tail. Maybe your brain. Do you need a dental chew? Do you need a chewy? Mm. Do you need a dental chew? Oh, you need a dental chew. Yeah.